Welcome to the lecture series on principles of electrical engineering. Uh, today, in this lecture, we will be discussing about the concept of phaser. So, uh, phaser, uh, although uh, a bit elusive, but it will be explained in a very simple way in this lecture and hope at the end of the lecture you will be in a position to uh, in a position to understand uh, what exactly is a phaser. So let's start. So uh, let's take an analogy. So this is a, a sinusoidal current. This is a sinusoidal current. So um, and let me uh, concentrate on this blue wave form. For the time being, I will come to the red wave form after some time and let you know the difference between the two and the relation between the two. Uh, before that, let me uh, take only the blue wave form, and this is a perfect sinusoidal wave form, and uh, let me express it with an uh, equation. So let me write it as V uh, equals to Vm sine omega t so uh, there are a few terms here so vm vm basically corresponds to the amplitude so vm is basically this amplitude and uh, omega is the angular frequency of this uh, waveform so omega if I correlate with the frequency of this waveform, so uh, the, let me uh, assume that the frequency of this waveform is f, then f is equal to 2 pi omega. So uh, generally, uh, 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 we deal with uh, uh, waveforms with frequency of 50 hertz in electrical engineering. So correspondingly, this omega will be uh, 50 divided by 2 pi and its uh, unit is in radians per second. So uh, uh, let's concentrate on this blue waveform. Let me draw an analogy for this sinusoidal waveform. So uh, we are basically interested in uh, expressing this sinusoidally varying waveform and sinusoidally varying in time uh, into a, a, a quantity uh, which is quite simple to represent. So uh, let me draw a circle here. I've drawn it. I've drawn this circle corresponding to the, uh, the, the radius. This radius of the circle corresponds to the magnitude of the waveform the sinusoidal waveform and uh, if I try to uh, uh, if I try to uh, plot uh, bring this each of the points here on the waveform and try to find a corresponding point on this uh, circle the dotted blue circle uh, which is equal to the radius vm okay so this is he till here similarly take any other point and we will have a corresponding point on the circle take this point and we will have this point on the circle so basically each of these points can be considered to be lying on the circle the dotted blue circle and uh, uh, we can assume that there is an arrow which basically represents the magnitude Vm of the sinusoidal wave and it is rotating anticlockwise anticlockwise with the frequency omega so it will be tracing a circle and each point on the circle basically corresponds to an equivalent point on the sinusoidal waveform 
So I hope it is clear. So we can trace the entire sinusoidal waveform and have a corresponding point on uh, the circle. Fine. So each point, each point of the sinusoidal wave will have a corresponding point on the circle. Okay. So basically, the sinusoidal wave has been converted into a rotating uh, arrow which is rotating at a speed of omega and tracing a circle. Let me now try to find out uh, what would be uh, 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 the components of this, uh, this uh, arrow. Okay, so before that, before that, uh, uh, let me uh, draw your attention towards uh, towards complex number representation. So, complex number representation. So, so if I consider an arrogant plane, the complex plane. So this is the imaginary axis, the imaginary axis, and uh, this is the real axis. Okay, so any point, any complex number, say I'm taking A plus JB. Okay, so uh, we in electrical engineering we avoid taking I as the imaginary number, and the reason is that we already have a variable, we already have a, a, a quantity current, so normally small i is reserved to represent this instantaneous current. So to avoid confusion, we generally use j in place of i. So any complex number can be represented on a complex plane, uh, and I've taken a plus i, a plus j b, so a on the real axis and B on the imaginary axis so this cross basically corresponds to this number so either I can represent it by a point or an arrow okay so this arrow uh, basically represents this number A plus JB so just try to compare the arrows here so these arrows are can also uh, represent a complex number so i can represent any of this arrow any of this arrow corresponding to a complex number okay is it fine so uh, let me proceed and take uh, uh okay uh so uh, let me take uh the x and y component okay x and y component of this uh, arrow which uh has a magnitude of vm so on the x axis so this number a say this is a so a here can be represented as vm or cos of alpha and similarly if i'm considering uh, uh, the 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 vertical axis uh, 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 so b will be equals to vm sine alpha and uh, we have already seen that this alpha is equals to omega t okay from there from here alpha is omega t so this is vm cos of omega t and this is vm sine of omega t so basically this this arrow which has a magnitude vm and it is rotating with the velocity omega uh, uh, so this can be presented uh, having uh, its uh, components on x and y axis as vm cos omega t and vm sine omega t 
so still not we have we haven't arrived at uh, uh, a, a, a simpler representation of the sinusoidally varying uh, quantity so uh, let me assume that if i'm standing on this uh, i'm standing on this uh, arrow so for me this arrow will be stationary it will be it won't be rotating rather the plane on which it lie it rotates okay so in in our concept uh, what we assume that the plane itself is rotating at a speed of omega and this arrow is is stationary is stationary so uh, if that's the case then I can easily see that these two quantities are constant okay these two quantities are constant because alpha is constant so is a and b fine so I can represent this this arrow uh, by a complex number and that is vm cos alpha plus j vm sine alpha so this is uh, your uh, uh, v okay so this is equals to vm now cos alpha plus j sine alpha uh, that's uh, easy uh, a better way to write it and write it is in Euler's form so this is equals to e to the power j alpha so vm e to the power j alpha okay so now we could see that uh, we have basically reduced this rotating uh, this uh, varying sinusoidal quantity into into uh into this type of representation so this is called the phasor representation of uh, uh, sinusoidal quantity okay so uh, basically uh, it is a complex number and complex number has got two types of representation so one is the cartesian form of representation which we have seen here and the other form of representation is the polar form of representation wherein we only write down the angle alpha and it's like this vm angle is alpha okay okay now come to the other waveform which is represented uh, which has been drawn in red okay so any other sinusoidally varying quantity having a different magnitude but of course having the same frequency can also be represented by an arrow with a different magnitude okay and in since it will be rotating at the same speed as that of this blue arrow so if i am standing at the blue arrow then i will also be observing this red arrow as a constant as a, a stationary quantity okay so so very easily we can now represent any sinusoidal quantity which is having different magnitude but same frequency on on a plane okay by arrows and the difference of the angle which the two arrows make is basically the phase difference is the phase difference between these two sinusoidally varying quantities okay so that's a very simple way of representing uh, sinusoidally varying quantities so we use this technique to represent the uh, the sinusoidally varying voltage and current and we do our analysis very easily so we will see how we can uh, do extend this analysis for resistive capacitive and inductive and then a combination of these uh, passive components in a circuit and we'll see how easily we can solve a uh, different variety of problem without uh, calling for differential or integral equations 
uh, in our uh, in our solution. Only mathematical algebras like plus minus.